Hi there. I wanted to do this unboxing video of the uh, Legacy Aviation Muscle Bike 85 inch. And this is the uh, radial version from Extreme Flight in Cumming, Georgia. And uh, technically it's not an unboxing because I've already unboxed it. But I did want to go through the components uh, just to show everybody what a really good job uh, this kit is. So let's get into it. So we're looking at the fuselage, of course. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, the marketing copy about this plane uh, advertises is fast field assembly and fast field disassembly. And I really like the fact that places on an airplane of this size where you're usually dealing with nuts and bolts, uh, everything is done with latches. So let's start with the main canopy. So we see here a latch and there's another one on the other side that holds the canopy in place and uh, instead of nuts and bolts. Now I have it unlatched at the moment, but once it's unlatched, it just comes off and we can gain access to uh, the rear part of the inner fuselage where your radio systems and your batteries are going to be, uh, maybe your fuel tank. And then the forward hatch, uh, let's see if I can do this without getting my hand in the shot. It slides back and just comes off. And we can see there are bolts that go into those keyholes. Yeah, and uh, here's the bolt. Here's the bolt. And they just slide into those keyholes and slide forward. Likewise, this latch assembly that I showed a minute ago uh, closes around this latching mechanism on the inside. So, no. No nuts and bolts on the whole top portion of the airplane. Uh, again, covering job, great. Uh, I will go over everything with an iron, of course. Uh, and uh, I have the rudder installed. The rudder is not glued in yet, but I'll point out that the rudder hinges are the only hinges that require glue in this whole kit. The other hinges on the other surfaces that I'll show you in a minute uh, are already glued in place and all of the gaps are sealed. So. Uh, we'll get into more of this as I get into the build. So let's go off. Let's take a look now at some of the other components. So we'll start with the stabilizer. And both the stabilizers and the wings come in their own Mylar bags that you could use for transportation if you wanted to uh, take the stabilizers off. For transportation and let's throw the bag on the ground well, let's have a look so again hinges are glued in gaps are sealed on both sides uh, the only thing that's really left to do here is to put the control horn in and you notice that the uh, slots are already cut so all we need to do then is to remove some material so the epoxy will have a place to adhere also, the thing I want to point out uh, about the assembly technique is, you know, the, the servo gets installed on the inside. There's the install. The servo arm comes out and controls the surface. And these two bolts that we see on the fore and the aft section of the stabilizer go into, let's see if I can keep this in camera, as it slides on the bar, it goes into place, and the thing that locks it into place are not nuts and bolts. Well, yeah, the, the two bolts. It's this uh, locking mechanism. It's a bolt that slides, and if I could actually get a camera on the inside, I'd show you. But there's a little slider on the inside with a hook that captures these bolts, this one and this one. So when you slide this locking bolt forward, it slides forward, it actually falls into a small indentation and it is locked in place. So uh, because the servos are on the inside of the stabilizer and because it's locked in place, you could actually remove it quite easily for transportation. Uh, very cool stuff. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at the wing. 
Again, the wings come packaged in a box within the box. Hinges are glued in place. Gaps are sealed, top and bottom. Uh, let's take a look at the bottom side. Okay, here, again, we can see where the control horn will go. And, uh, sorry, it was on the wrong side. The control horn will go on this side. Here's the place for the servo. And uh, just I'm just feeling for it. I'm sure it's in there. Uh, but uh, it's really all done. The other thing that uh, Extreme Flight's been doing with all of their airplanes lately is uh, once the wing is installed on the carbon tube and slid into the fuselage, we can see those latching mechanisms. So again, no inner bolts to have to deal with. You just slide the wing on. Let's see if I can do this. And shut it down. I'm not going to do this so I don't have to reopen it. It's uh, it's really, really quite nice. Okay, let's move on and take a look at some of the other stuff that comes with the airplane. So here we have the top center section of the wing. And again, you know, once this is mounted, the upper wing will slide in on the tube. And just like everything else, we have these latches that secure the wing in place. No, no nuts and bolts. Everything slide and latch, slide and latch. Uh, let's look at a few other things. All right, let's, look, let's look at the, uh, the cowl. I'll just set this here. Cowl is one piece fiberglass. Really nice. I'm not going to mount it uh, in this uh, video because that takes two hands, but really well done. It mounts to the fuselage with two bolts there, two capture points, that those points right there and there, and then a bottom mounting screw. You'll also notice, let me, let me turn this over, I have the baffle ring just in place. It's not glued or anything. Uh, and that should be, according to the assembly manual, the most time-consuming part of this process is to get the baffles for the radial engine in place. So, a uh, very good job. You know, if I was going to point out <coughs> any imperfection, and it's a minor detail, is the paint on the cowl color doesn't match perfectly to the covering color. But in my opinion, that's a small nit. Look at a few other odds and ends that come comes with a pilot and the pilot has the mounting screws which let's go back over to the canopy if we can get there fit into those two screw holes so mounting the pilot is really a breeze or will be again get into more of that when we get into the build uh, the cabane struts Again, haven't gotten into the build yet, just have gone through the manual. <clears throat> but what I like about this is all four of these struts are the same size. So I don't think you need to be concerned too much with which ones are front and which ones are in back. Yeah, maybe I will, but we'll find out when we get into the build. Uh, all of the bags are labeled. You know, control rods. By the way, the links are already installed on the control rods. So wings, stab, uh, rudder is here somewhere. I already took the rudder parts out. Uh, main wheel axles. The wheels are a very nice aluminum hub with a nylon bushing. Uh, these are pretty solid tires. Uh, probably won't bounce particularly well. So <clears throat> after I get it put together and flying it, uh, we might decide to change those wheels, but we'll see. Uh, all the wheel pants hardware, again, everything's labeled, labeled, labeled. Uh, wheel pants. 
blind nuts already installed and glued in place. So installing should be pretty easy. Uh, the carbon uh, landing gear is interesting. Uh, it was not readily apparent to me which side was the front or not until I took a really close look at it. And these legs have an airfoil shape to them. So just like a wing, you know, the thicker part would be in front and the trailing edge would be thinner. So uh, we know uh, which is front and which is back. So that's pretty simple. Uh, other things that I'll point out, the control horns, labeled, labeled, labeled. So there's, there's really no doubt. Uh, these are the pieces that will be glued into the wing to retain the struts. And uh, the struts are even labeled, so there's no confusion. And, and if you took a close look, this camera's not going to do it justice. There is a slight bevel at the top, uh, so there really is a left and a right. Uh, the thing I like a lot is how the struts are going to be retained with these wires. Now, I know, uh, I think Flex Innovations, their big biplane, the Mamba 70, uses this, a similar technique for mounting the struts with a retaining wire. Uh, and what I've read on the forums about the Mamba is uh, engine vibration tends to uh, uh, vibrate those loose. I'll tell you what, the little bit of testing I've done pre-assembly here, these uh, retaining wires are snug. So I, I don't see them coming out on vibration. But even if they did, I, I think maybe filling the holes with a little CA and just you know, reseating the wire uh, retainer would be fine. So that's our initial unboxing. Oh, I, I completely didn't show you the decals and the rest of the, uh, the baffle assembly. Still looking forward to that. Uh, I do want to show you the box this thing came in. Uh, when I, you know, I, I'm fortunate I live close enough to extreme flight that I could go pick this up so I didn't have to ship it. Uh, this corrugated material is <laughs> really heavy and really sturdy. Uh, it's like a wood crate. Right? It's not as heavy as wood, but it, but it is sturdy. So uh, it's no surprise that this uh, was manufactured overseas and was shipped and got all the way to my house without, uh, without any damage. Just really good stuff. So I'm really looking forward to the build, but I did want to share this unboxing with everybody. So leave comments if, uh, if you have any experience with this, if you started your build already. I'd love to share notes. Thanks. Be talking to you soon. Bye.